Hello everyone and welcome back to part 2 of CSS Level 2. In this lecture we're going to be discussing and learning about the CSS box model. The box model allows us to precisely dictate how we want HTML elements to look on a page. So the basic box model looks something like this. You have your HTML content. That may be something like a paragraph of text within your HTML. Then in between the paragraph or whatever HTML content you have and the border you have padding. And remember the border is something we've actually played with before in CSS. That was things like a two pixel dotted orange border around your content. So if you want more space between your actual content and the border, you have padding there. And then if you want some space between your border and other HTML contents within their own box model, there's a margin you can specify beyond that border. So each of these padding, border, and margin elements have a space that you can define. That way you can space out your elements exactly how you want them to look. And you can also specify each side. So just beyond padding, border, and margin, you can actually specify left, right, bottom, etc. to have even more flexibility and control over the box model and your HTML elements. Let's explore some examples of this by jumping to our editor and our browser. Okay, so here in my editor, I have an HTML file open called part two box models. It's linked here in my browser. And then I also have it linked to a style sheet here that's blank right now. Let's add a little bit of content to this HTML file to get started. I'll add a heading one element and it will just be saying something like top. And we'll give it the ID top. And then we'll add another heading one and we'll call it bottom with the same ID bottom. So let's refresh this and see we have top and bottom. And now let's explore what happens when we adjust the box model around these. So remember the box model consists of the margin, the border, the padding, and then the actual content. So to make it clear what's actually going on, let's come back to the CSS and then create a CSS call for each of them, for each of their IDs. So that's top and bottom. And we'll give each of them a border. So the border for the first one, let's have it be a four pixel solid blue border. And for the bottom one, we'll give it a border of four pixel solid red. So let's save that, refresh over here. And we can see now we have the actual borders around them. So something that we can actually specify is the width of the border itself, which we've experimented a little bit by actually calling in pixels, but what we can do is defined width as a percentage. So we can see right now that this blue border here goes from essentially one end of the browser to the other. And if I stretch this browser out as well, you'll see that the border continues to stretch along with me stretching the browser, which is good, but sometimes you don't want it to go from end to end. You actually want to define it based on some sort of percentage, and you can do just that. So if I wanted to define the width, Based off some percentage, I can say 25%. And now if I refresh this, I can see we're going to take out 25% of the width of the browser. So as I ex expand this, we can see we're expanding the blue browser as long as it takes up 25% of the width of the actual page itself. Now let's show you another thing we can do. We've already seen text align, but let's go ahead and show that. If I say text align center, and refresh this page, I can see now my text is aligned to the center relative to the actual border. Now let's imagine that I actually want to move this entire blue block around. Well, what do I have to change then? If we go back to our box model image, which I've opened up here in a new tab, we see that it's really the margin that's going to define the space between the border and everything else. So right now, if we go back here, I have the content, some border, and then the margin. And in between the content and the border is padding. But what we, really want, what we really want to change here is this margin right here. If I want to center this entire blue border. And one thing we can do is actually specify specifically margin. And then what I can say is the top, right, bottom, and left pixels. So we'll start off by showing you the pixels. What happens if we say something like this? 10 pixels on the top. And let me actually put this as a comment so you can remember the order. It goes top, right, bottom, left. 
The other way you could do this is by actually specifying something like margin-left. So we saw earlier in an image that I can specifically specify left, right, top, bottom, but you can just do it all in one single margin call just by the spacing. And there's actually no comma that goes in between these. So we'll have the top be 10 pixels margin, right be 20 pixels, and let's say bottom is a lot. We'll make it 100 pixels and left will make it 400 pixels or something just so we can get an idea of the differences here. And if I refresh this, we can see here now we're actually defining the margin based off of pixels where the width is still defined to be 25% of the actual width of the page. Now if I call auto here to the margin, save this and refresh, notice that it will be auto centered. So if you want something to be centered, not just the text, but the actual block itself, that box model, we can see that we can call auto here. And right now I'm calling a width of 25% of the browser page and the margin is auto so that it's even on both sides. Great. Now let's mess around a little bit with this bottom call. Let's specify that width to be 50% of the page. And let's give it some padding. And remember, padding is going to make space between the actual content and the border itself. So keep in mind what you think is going to happen if I say something like padding 200 pixels here. What do you expect this shape to look like as far as the relationship between bottom and this red border. Well, let's find out. I'm going to refresh. And this is basically exactly what we hopefully expected. Remember, padding is the difference between the content itself and the border. So if we come back here, we see that we have the content, the padding, and then the border. So what do I do if I want to maybe align this to the center? Well, I just come back here and call text align center. Refresh. And I can see now my text alignment has been centered. Okay, so that is the basics of learning the box model for CSS. Really, we just want to focus on those four things. The actual content itself, the padding, the border, and then the margin. And remember the spacing that happens between all of them. And the fact that you can call top, left, right, or bottom for each of those things. Okay, coming up next is going to be an explanation of a project that will really help hone in on these ideas. I know we just really briefly covered it in this lecture, but the next project is really designed for you to kind of discover these things on your own. And then the next section we'll be discussing Bootstrap, which is going to help automate a lot of these things so you don't have to worry every time about adding a new element, what the border is, what the width is, what the margin is, etc. A lot of that stuff is going to be taken care of when we begin to use Bootstrap. But for now, we want to make sure that you understand if you had to go in and manually edit the CSS, that you're able to do that with the box model. So again, box model, main thing to get out is that if you need to adjust your content, you have the padding, border, and margin all to play around with to get stuff to look exactly like you want it to. And you can define things in percent or in pixel, and then you can align things to be auto as well. All right, thanks everyone. I'll see you at the next lecture where we're going to explain that project to you and how it's really going to help you understand the box model. And there's also a font aspect to it as well. Thanks, I'll see you at the next lecture.